So what we're going to do now is try making some mini file folders and that's using the 4x6 journal card. Now I'm fortunate enough in that I've got this tab punch board that I'm going to use and that's from We Are Memory Keepers. So I'll show you how to use this but if you don't have that then I will show you another way how you can make tabs on the journal cards. So we'll set that in and we're going to make one and I'm going to have my tabs on the front of the file folder rather than the back so that they're coloured and not just a plain white. So inserting that, push it down so that's trimmed one side, put that back into the storage place and I'm just going to do I think small tabs are uh, I was going to do medium but I think I'll do the small so just lining that up with the S on this cutting board so there's that's giving me the tab and then we'll just trim it across and these are nice nice and simple to, to follow this and then there's a blade on there and I just shift this away a wee bit so that I know I'm getting it in the gap between the tab that I've cut and the bit I'm wanting to cut off. Make sure both edges are firmly pressed against the side here and then slide that across. Put that back in place and then slip it out. So that has given me the edge there of my tab. So now sometimes you do need to just tidy it up a little bit that's where you push it a little bit hard, so I'll just use my scissors to do that. Just because I'm pedantic like that. Nothing wrong with that. Now I've got this little wee block here, which I can use for something else. I'm sure I'll come up with something for that. So now what I'm wanting to do is fold this in half and I'm going to line up this edge with this bit here rather than the tab. Of course I could line it up with here um, but then I'd have a little strip of white showing because it's just plain white on the inside so I'm going to line it up with this edge here. Now, I am going to use my scoreboard but first of all I just want to get an idea of where I need to go. So it's about four and seven eighths. So I want to make that two and seven sixteenths if I can do that I'm using my school board. So bring this up. Now I tend to use my school board sideways, which is probably not ideal, but um, I just find it's easier for me because I've got quite short arms. So that's that's just my excuse. So I'm sticking with it. Just some stuff away from my desk because yes, I've got too much junk on here. So we said. Two, it's just under two and a half, so I might go for, if I do two and a half, that'll, that'll take me to five, which is about there, so I don't want that, it's one under, under the five, so I'm just going to move it up a fraction, and now do this line here. So making sure it's firmly pushed against there, the edge, and then press down on the cardboard. So there we go, that's given me a score line. Hoping for the best to see if my maths is correct and I'm short by about quarter of an inch. Okay, so not a problem. We will create a 
so it should have been about two and a quarter but what we're going to do is we're going to create a dimensional file folder instead because we can to cover that error just the same as you would see on office file folders how they have pre-arranged little score marks so we've got one and we have two so when we fold it like that so we now have a little wee spine on our file folder for putting things in and then we can corner around those that corner and we're just going to use this corner for now so we want one eighth Helps if I open it out fully. That's one, two, three, and then I like to flip them over and do them again just to make sure that the corners have rounded correctly. That's better. Oops, crash, fall down, not enough space. And then just to finish it off, you know, quite like that. So we're using vintage photo distress ink. And we're just wanting to is really colour the edges so they're not showing up too white. And put a little bit of an edge on this. Outer edge of the journal card. So just inking all the way around. You can do as much or as little as you want. And I've done it from this side so that the ink's going on the edge and there may just be a little bit of um, extra inking coming through. But essentially I want the ink to show on this outer edge rather than on the inside. And it's just a subtle inking on this one. That vintage photo is quite a lot lighter than either the walnut stain or the gathered twigs. And then I can also just ink along here on both of these fold lines to give that a bit of emphasis as well. So there we go. So that's one little wee mini file folder. It's a dimensional one, so inside there, I mean, it, it's not too thick, so that can quite e happily go into um, a junk journal just as it is um, to include, and we can put some other things inside if we wanted to. Of course, you can add embellishments on the front, but at this stage, we're just going to leave it like this. So now what if you don't have a punch board for tabs or anything similar, well what can you do then? Easiest answer is to grab a manila folder that you have and you can trace around the edge. Now this is a fairly large tab so I'm not going to want it that big but it at least gives me an idea on the corners and I can judge how big I want it to be. Again, I'm going to have it on the upper side rather than the lower side. And that's what most tabs do and most manila folders. But I like the idea of it sitting there so that I have got the coloured pattern there. 
And what we're going to do is we'll do it on this side here so that we'll have a set of two, one with the tab here and one up the top. So first thing we're going to do is because it's on this side, I'm going to draw on the back and I'll do this in pen, though I would normally do it in pencil. And what we're going to do is corner around there. So the idea now is to work out roughly where you want it. So we want that there. So now I'm just using a biro pen so that you can see it on here. And that gives me one corner there. So hopefully you can see that just where I've drawn around the corner. And then we want it to be, so how big is that? I want the tab to be just over an inch and a quarter, so maybe make it an inch and a half, because that whole tab, well that whole tab is an inch and three quarters, so if we make it that, that length there instead, so we want it to be an inch and three quarters, so that is about there for the side, just put a little wee, just put a little wee dot where I want that second corner to be, I'm going to line up the top of the tab with that straight edge there, fine, there's my little wee dot, so that is roughly where I want my corner to be, this way just a fraction, Just going inside there. And then I can decide well, how deep do I want that tab to be. And this one is three quarters of an inch. So we'll do this one the same. So we want that three quarters of an inch. And Three quarters of an inch. Now again, I would recommend that you do this in pencil rather than pen, just because then if you, when you trim, you can always rub out those pencil markings. But just for this exercise, so you can see, um, I've just drawn it in pen. To see where my cutting line is going to be. Now that's going to be quite a large tab. I mean you might find that you want to do it half an inch. But just because I'm doing it with this one. I'm going to make sure they're the same depth. So again a good pair of sharp scissors. Which we should all have in our kits. And I'm just going to trim this corner around. Or you could use a corner corner rounder then we're going to go straight up here following that line that I've drawn trim straight up here as well to get a nice sharp V and then I'll round this corner here And again, I'll put this aside so that I can use that for something else. So there we've got our folder. And then if you don't have a scoreboard, you can just bring this up. And we're just going to do this as a flat folder this time. I will use my bone folder. So there we've got a second, and you will notice it is slightly taller because it hasn't got that seam, or that spine rather. So we've got that, so once again we will do the corner rounder. And again if you don't have a corner rounder like this, you can just manually cut round it with your scissors. 
but I've got one and it's much faster than me cutting around so in the interest of speed and everyone's sanity there you go I'll just trim that there and again we will ink so that it looks like a set we'll use this vintage photo again once again using from the top down so that the ink is going predominantly on the pattern side where we've got the patchwork design from Susan's kit and just quickly catching the edge all around and making sure we get the cut edge so that it doesn't stand out because sometimes you notice particularly where you've got dark colors like this green um, the white cut edge of your cardboard can stand out like a sore thumb and it looks horrible whereas just putting a little bit of ink like this on the edge just seems to make it fade into nothingness and of course on our fold on both sides as we will be looking at it from the front and the back so at this stage I'm imagining these file folders being tucked into pockets in a junk journal though of course if you wanted to you could adhere them in place and just have them flipping open but I quite like the pattern on the back so I'd want that to be able to be pulled out and, and looked at um, and then you could always put your junk journaling stamps in there to give you journal lines or just leave it blank as a journal block like that so there's a set of two little wee mini file folders that you can quickly make for inclusion in your junk journal of course if you don't make journals there's nothing stopping you from putting this on like a card so you've got like a card on a card or you can put them make this into a little wee mini album maybe put in sheets of paper for shopping list that would be a great idea you can just use pages out of um, an old notebook or something like that um, print them off because like, let's just use these as a sample you could fit quite a few pages in there without it bulging um, and admittedly that is cardboard so um, there's quite a few in there but if you just used like regular printed paper or notebook paper then you'd be surprised how many pages you could fit into there and you can either staple them in stitch them in or even glue them in so that's the first extra that we can make for our journals <laughs> 